how to make this morning something productive, something unique to each of you, right? So for family emergency preparedness planning, um, there's a lot of materials out there already, some published by the church, about how to prepare for emergencies, some just, you know, lots of people in the world have thoughts and ideas about this. And so I, what I focused my time on was, how could I help each of you come up with an opportunity and a way to tailor your planning purposes to your particular family's needs? Um, you know, if you go to the church's website for the, uh, providentliving.org, right, there are a lot of resources for some general ideas about emergency preparedness and emergency planning and talks about food storage, water storage, and uh, a lot of good general advice around um, financial planning, right, things like that. But each of us is different. Each of us has different lives. And there is no way I was going to be able to come up and give each of you your personal, right, perfect plan for how to survive in all emergencies. Um, and in fact, that's one of the first things I wanted, to, I, I wanted to know was, one of the things that a lot of people get stuck in when they do emergency planning is they get really honed in on one type of emergency, right? The zombie apocalypse. That's going to be what gets us. That's what I've got to prepare for, right? I need baseball bats and nails in them, and I need granola bars. And, and they really, like, focus their lives around one specific emergency, and that's, and, you know, and they prepare for it, which is great. But the truth is that emergencies can come in as many shapes, sizes, and severities as, as life, you know, otherwise has good things going on. And so I wanted to think of a way that we could be able to kind of evaluate our lives on a regular basis and plan for emergencies um, across the spectrum. Some of them that may be small and easy to prepare for, but some of them may be larger, maybe more the kind of thing that we're used to thinking about, like natural disaster. Um, so, I provided a handout, and it's really just four questions, and we'll kind of step through them and discuss them and try to, you know, kind of see how these work, but um, it's really just four questions. First question is, what are your family's priorities? Second question is, how do you accomplish these priorities today, right? Let's assume at the moment you're not in a state of emergency, maybe you are, but let's say for the moment you're not. How, what are you doing today that makes your family's priorities actually come to pass and actually work out? Uh, the third thing is, this is kind of the emergency part, what can disrupt your daily activities, your cu current baseline activities to help your family do what you want to do? And the fourth thing is, what can you do to plan to overcome those disruptions? Um, and we'll get into some details about each of these questions as we step through them. And so let's talk about the first one. What are family priorities? What are some examples? Staying safe. Staying, not getting stranded places, not overextending yourself. Yeah, being, being able to sleep at night peacefully, right? Being safe, that's a great one. What other ideas? Knowing where everybody's at. Yeah, knowing where everybody's at. Security, maybe even a bigger sense of security, right? The security of the family, the security of the children, right? My oldest just turned 11, and it seems like one of the big priorities of my family is eating, right? Like, it seems to be that, oh, he had a bunch of friends over, and they literally just drained the snack bucket in a few minutes. It was just, you know, evaporated. Um, eating, right? Food, right? Health, uh, family priorities. Um, it's funny, when I went through this exercise myself in preparation, I kind of went to the same place, and I kind of got stuck really quickly. Like, wow, is that really all the priorities? I, I seem to be busy every single day in a way that doesn't have to do with safety, security, and eating. Like, in health, like, what, what are my other priorities? Um, a few weeks ago, Brett had this, shared this thought with me that I thought was actually really great for helping me think about your priorities. And it was uh, this kind of exercise. It's, imagine you're in your home, and you have five seconds to get out of it. What do you take with you? Okay? And then, then imagine you have five minutes to get out. Then what do you take with you? Then imagine you have five hours to take out. Then what do you take with you? So what's the difference between that? Five seconds, five minutes, five hours. What's the difference between those, those, those different time frames? Exactly, five seconds. There's no taking anything, right? You're not even getting dressed, right? You're out the window. Right? So that's where 
right? Life, security, safety. Like those priorities are really tough. But what's really, and, and so that makes sense. That's where we already got to. But here's what's interesting. What if you got five minutes? Now what do you take? Now you've got a couple, you got, you can go get something, right? You can go get that bowling trophy. You can, what do you get? Well, give me some examples. What do you get with five minutes? Okay. It's got stuff in it, not to last you a few days, whatever. Um, shoes. 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 Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Because you're going to be yeah. outside. But still, you need more than one pair of safety related kinds of things. You know what I thought of first thing out of my mind? My hard drives. I've got a computer. Uh, we've got some hard drives in it. It has every family photo. It has all of our personal information. It has our family journals. It has our collections of music, right? Like all the memories in our family are stored in one metal box in the kitchen. So if I had five minutes, I'd probably send Sam, my wife, to get me some shoes. And then I'd go get the hard drives, right? Because if I can save that one thing, literally everything else in the house, in our entire home, I can reproduce if I actually cared about it. But those memories, right? You know, my first son being born, you know, those birthdays, all of that, I can't re recreate that. And so that, that was my thought, was, you know, photos. Um, depending on how fit I was feeling, I may also try to go and get the filing cabinet that had things like birth certificates and passports and, you know, those documents can all be replaced, but it is a big pain. Um, so maybe I would try to get that too. But that was what I thought of for five minutes was, or that was something that was irreplaceable. Um, uh, but otherwise, I didn't go for a bowling trophy. Never won a bowling trophy. But if I had, I still wouldn't go for it. Um, what about five hours? That's a whole different thing. I mean, now you're, you're, pat you're trying to make the choice, right? Do I want this code or that code, right? Do I want... You know, this TV or that TV. Now, like now, you actually, after two and a half hours, you just give up and drive away anyway, right? Like, it's just too much of a hassle to spend a full five hours thinking about all the garbage you've accumulated. So five hours is a, you know, kind of a different thing. But, but five minutes is interesting. It taught me, like, oh, if I was going to spend those five minutes to go get those hard drives, like, that's a priority in our family that I kind of hadn't realized. Um, and that's something worth planning around. Um, other priorities that as I kind of looked around and did research and spoke with people that came up, um, uh, education, right? When I look at my life, what do I spend my time doing? I spend a lot of effort trying to help myself, my wife, my children, further their education, whatever that means. For my kids, that's public school. For my wife and I, that's a lot of other things. Uh, but education is a big part of it. It's a priority for us. And it's something that I realized, if I'm going to take time to plan for emergencies, education is one of the things I want to plan around, I want to be able to accomplish. Um, education, um, expression, uh, you know, music, either playing or listening to it, read books, literature, reading. Um, in some ways, these, these things are luxuries, right? You can live without them. But what if you could plan so you didn't have to? Right? Um, you know, one of the things we talk about with food storage is, you know, don't only buy buckets of wheat because you're going to get pretty tired of that pretty fast. Go ahead and buy some sugar as well. Right? Go ahead and buy some things that you do want to eat. Um, I think when we start talking about emergency preparedness, you know, the priority of, you know, self-expression uh, doesn't mean you're going to have, you know, you're not going to bring all of Netflix with you, right? Um, you're not going to necessarily keep your whole DVD collection, but being able to think, remember that, hey, you know what? For this member of my family, playing the violin is maybe even more important than um, than eating. It's more important than chocolate, right? For this person, maybe writing in their journal. Uh, these types of priorities is also like think about the individual members of your family. Uh, for each of them, something may come up that is a unique priority. And it's worth planning around. Um, so that's the first step, right? These are all, I think, kind of very good priorities. Um, and these are, uh, you know,
you know, this, this is the first step. And for your family, as you get into this, you're going to probably end up with some very specific and unique things, right? And that's, that's good. That's the point. Um, some priorities may seem even trivial, right? Like, I really like to wear brown shoes, right? Maybe that's a priority that you have to plan around. Maybe it's not. Maybe when all is said and done, you think, yeah, I do like brown shoes, but I'm going to live wild there. I'm just going to risk it. Maybe I'll end up with black shoes one day. Um, and that's okay, too. But this, for the first step, don't worry about all the rest of it. You usually want to think about, how do, what, do, you know, what are our priorities? What do we live for? Um, so the second question, how do you accomplish these things? How do we accomplish safety? What do you do? I don't even lock my, my door, front door right now is wide open. Well, I'm not, it's closed, but it's, it's not locked. I don't want to lock my doors. Um, right? So what do I do for safety? It's funny, I thought it was a priority, but when I thought about what do I do day to day, I didn't even lock my door. What do we do for safety? So, yeah, I don't, I, I don't have answers here, necessarily. I did have some thoughts. Um, one of which that I realized was, I don't lock my door because I know my neighbors. I know my community, right? And um, part of the reason why safety for me doesn't involve, you know, bunkering down in my basement with a shotgun is because I, I know where I am. I know my circumstances. And so one of the things that I do in order, to per, in order to kind of accomplish my priority of safety and security is myself and my family I keep in a place where I frankly I don't have to worry about it as much. Um, now, that's an interesting thing, right? That's, you know, maybe you haven't ever really thought of security as much about the neighborhood I live in as much as locking my doors. And maybe you do you lock your doors. I don't know your neighbors. But, um, but that's something to think about, right? Is um, like how do you, so that so that was security. How do you accomplish health? Right? Health was a family priority we kind of quickly agreed on. How do you accomplish health? Well, you have to eat. Have to eat? Yeah. yeah. Food these days, I mean, the bigger issue for most of us is eating less, right? It's eating the right things, not just eating in general. Um, you know, exercise, um, you know, most of us, you know, not including me, but most of us try to figure out how to, you know, exercise and get out and elevate the, you know, heart rate and cardiovascular fun. Um, but, um, but that's good. Yeah. Keeping the right medications. Taking medications, healthcare, like literally healthcare. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, one of the things that we do, uh, the, one of the hard things about this one is um, so much in our current, the way we all currently live, it's all based on money, right? My house is a money thing, right? My food is a money, I'm not growing food, right? It's a money thing. Uh, if I'm running, it's on a treadmill, which I bought with money, um, right? If I'm getting in medical care, I'm paying money for it. The reality of how most of us live is when you talk about how do I accomplish my priorities, the answer is money, right? If my son's playing violin, I'm not carving a violin for him. I'm buying a violin for him. Um, so one of the things we need to think about, and like I said, it kind of lurks in the background, but this is where money becomes a big deal. This is where money suddenly becomes a big part of emergency planning and emergency preparedness is because we have these kind of big priorities. But when you look at how we accomplish them as individuals, a lot of that ties back to money one way or another. Um, it doesn't have to, right? You can go somewhere way off, buy 50 acres, grow everything, carve everything, you know, do it all yourself. That is possible. But we, I don't live that way, right? I live my life that money is the medium through which I accomplish most of my family's priorities. Um, so now let me ask a different question. How do you get money? Work, employment. Uh, Self-employment, maybe. Um, right? You can slice and dice that concept however you want, a thousand different ways. Investments, services, good, you know, just depending on who you are, 
how you want to see it, but the reality is it's, it's some kind of work. You're doing something to participate in the economy. Um, so that's something to think about. In emergency preparedness, a lot of what we are doing, like a lot of how we accomplish what we want in life is based on our, it's, it's money. How do we get money? Um, but now that I've said that, it really isn't all money. Um, in my family, right, we have small children, and the way we accomplish security and health and education for those small children before they're going to public school and before they're participating in the school systems, is my wife stays home, right? That's, we, we don't buy that, um, and that's a big priority. Right? Those are, that's how we accomplish those priorities um, day to day. And so it's important to think about that because the amount of money it would take to replace the, the way that my wife accomplishes security, safety, health, education, and all of that, it's a lot more than I make. Um, right, that's a, that's a huge amount of how we accomplish our priorities and, and frankly money, like I said, I don't make enough to just pay for that to change. Um, so that's another thing to keep in mind, right, a lot of how we live life uh, may include individuals living in a certain way, right, my wife staying home is a big part of how we accomplish our priorities. Um, and so that's something to think about. If, if you're in a family with maybe one spouse or you know, a single parent family, um, you've got one person that's bearing the load of all of that, right? In my family, I earn most of the money and my wife does a lot of the stuff at home. Um, and so that's, we, you know, that's how we've divided it, which in some ways is good, but maybe in some ways presents some other challenges that we'll uncover later. Um, but it's important to think about that, even with your kids, right? One of the things my parents didn't really appreciate and plan on was having their kids not mow the lawn as they all left home. Right? And for a few years, my parents thought, okay, we'll go out and do it. Um, and then they quickly got over that idea. Um, and then they realized, oh, we've got to bring in somebody else to mow the lawn. Right? You know, even our children, right? grandparents, friends, there's a lot of these individuals that may be a part of helping to accomplish our family priorities. Um, and it's important to kind of appreciate, you know, kind of count the great things that we receive from all the wonderful people in our life. Um, but it's also important to realize that how these people contribute. Um, because when you, well, for the next step. Um, so that, that's going to go on to the next question. The next question is, um, so we've talked about some of these different ways in which we can so we talked about our priorities, and we talked a little bit about how to how we accomplish them kind of in, in normal living. But how do those normal activities get disrupted? Health. Health. Job. Yeah. Employment situations. Life events. Life events. Right? And you haven't even scratched the surface. Right? Um, you haven't even scratched the surface of what could go on. Right? You didn't talk about zombies. Disaster. Yeah, you didn't talk about aliens, um, earthquakes, hurricanes. I'm mean, living in Utah. I'm not planning on a hurricane. In fact, a hurricane would be awesome here, right? You'd be all over a hurricane. Get that much water all at once. We pay for a hurricane. Um, but no, it's. Um, so let's talk about some of these things. Um, like, you, you know, you said like disasters. What disasters actually apply to you, though? It's not a hurricane, right? That's what they get in Texas and Florida, right? Or if you're in the Pacific Ocean, a typhoon. Um, Earthquakes are the biggest one. Earthquake, even though, when was the last earthquake in Utah? Mm, a few weeks ago. What was there? Yeah, down in southern Utah. So earthquakes. It's funny, I used to work in the Riverwoods down in Provo. And um, I spoke with a person who worked there a long time. And they said one of the things that they did an evaluation on was um, uh, Deer Creek Reservoir, that dam bursting. They said, it turns out that, that dam breaks, they've drawn a line in Orm and Provo of what becomes the new lake. Um, and we worked in the middle of that lake. That dam broke, we had three minutes to get out of the lake <laughs> before it became a lake. Um, you know, so talk about a natural disaster, 
you know, we have a lot of reservoirs, a lot of dams. If you happen to live near one, that could be a natural disaster. Um, in fact, right, you know, even in other places, you know, kind of man-made structures failing, the kind of big control structures like that failing, um, is what exacerbates natural disasters. Um, well, look at how the Teton Dam would have broke James Idaho. Exactly. Yeah, see, dam breaking. I, I would kind of fit that into natural disaster. Um, like I said, definitely from when we lived, from when I was working down there in Provo, as I spoke with other kind of businesses there, that was the biggest natural disaster they had to plan around. Uh, right, the most extreme thing that they could legitimately plan on. Uh, because all of their buildings were earthquake code, and, you know, they, they thought they were ready for an earthquake, but the one thing they couldn't plan around was, was that dam bursting. Uh, you, you weren't living here when Thistle slid. When Thistle slid, and it covered us the whole town of Thistle with water. Oh, really? Yeah. The whole slid down, slid down, cut off the road, and then just built a huge lake behind it. Wow. From Spanish Fork Canyon. Um, natural disaster here that I think we do think a lot about is drought. We haven't had to worry about it for the last few years. Um, but, you know, if there's a natural disaster that Utah has to deal with in a way that, you know, others don't, it, it's drought, right? We worry a lot about drought. Um, that's a natural disaster. Um, how do these, it's funny though, you know, you talk about drought, natural disaster, um, I think when we talk about emergency planning, this is exactly where we always go. Um, you know, hurricane, earthquake, zombies. Um, and um, how does that actually affect how we do things, though, right? Right? My wife stays home, I earn money, right? my kids eat food. That, those, that's how we live life. There's a lot of earthquake scenarios that actually don't change any of that. Right? Drought is interesting because drought maybe means I, I have to change how I, you know, irrigate my property. Maybe it changes how much money water costs, how much my income. Right, right now I don't really think about right paying for water because it's a trivial thing. But a drought could change that. Um, it's, so that's why we did those other questions first. It's because now when we start talking about the disasters that can occur, now we can contextualize them, right? And, we can, and so now we can start to think about, okay, so if an earthquake happens, you know, there are, there are low-level earthquakes where maybe I get woken up in the middle of the night, but then otherwise I go on living. There could be catastrophic earthquakes that level all buildings in Utah Valley. Um, and that's a, a very different level of thing. Um, so the, right, there's kind of all those different levels, but there's a lot of different earthquakes, a lot of different disasters but because people have been around, right, we've been, we've had our homes crushed by rock slides and flooded by rivers, and we've done this many, for many, many generations, we've actually gotten okay, not good, but okay, at having a lot of this built into our lives, right? Most homes are moderately earthquake, you know, resistant, right? They're not going to survive something incredibly cataclysmic, but for most earthquakes, most homes will do just fine. Um, same with most places of work, places of business, things like that. Um, so that's, that's why we want to, right, so that's something to think about. Um, again, when you start thinking about uh, emergencies, you could get really worried about a hurricane. But it's okay to say, I live in Utah, we're not getting a hurricane. And just put that one aside, not one to plan around, at least not the first one to plan around. Maybe if you get super prepared for life, you can start planning for a hurricane in Utah. But not the first thing to prepare for. Um, but health, health events. Um, right, that's a big one. Um, you know, it's, it's amazing how much a health event quickly changes the day-to-day -day of life. Um, even minor health events, right? Very minor health events, a minor surgery that, you know, no risk, you know, it's just a simple thing, um, but you're going to spend, you know, 8 to 16 weeks sore, right, not functioning at full capacity. Uh, that's going to quickly change how you live. might mean that you spend more money doing takeout. It might mean that you need some additional help. It might mean 
It could, be, it could mean you're taking time off work, right? Maybe your work situation allows for paid time off. Maybe it doesn't. Um, so, you know, health events, uh, health events is one to think seriously about for everybody. Um, especially if you already know you have a unique health circumstance, um, right? If you have a, a health risk or, uh, you, you know, something is likely to occur or it has, you know, you've already had a heart attack. Um, it's definitely worth thinking about and planning for, well, what happens for my next heart attack? Um, what happens, you know, you know, uh, for this or that? Um, health is a good one to think about. How do we, and then you have to think about it for each member of the family, right? What if I have a heart attack? Right? Could happen tomorrow, right? Something to think about. What happens if my wife has a heart attack? That's really unlikely. Probably not worth spending a lot of time there. Um, what if my child breaks a bone? That happens every six hours. Um, right? Like, it's, so, you know, but each of them also have kind of have a different level of impact on the family. Um, so health events are a good one. Um, what other ideas? What other ways can we disrupt our normal day-to-day -day life? Life changes. Okay. It's funny. Uh, some things we, we, we talk about life change, we can include things like, Buying a new home and moving. You don't think of that as an emergency because, right, usually it's an exciting time. You, um, you're, you know, you're, you're moving, you're going someplace new, there's a lot of cool things, and it's usually very you know, voluntary, although it may not be. Um, and so we don't think of that as an emergency, but it can have an impact on our day to day life, right? Moving takes time away from work, it takes time from mom away from being able to maybe make dinner, from being able to get kids to school. Or maybe you move so far away from school that suddenly the parents are spending, you know, 10% of each day driving kids to and from school. Um, so, yeah, life events like that can have a big impact, yeah. So, since you're talking, I'm thinking about some other things. And, and where most of us are in our lives, our families are, are growing up. And like yours, you're still younger. And what I start looking at is my extended family. My siblings and what am I going to need to do to help them because I know their situations and their preparedness and you know what am I going to do to help my own kids and my married kids so I start looking a little bit farther than more than just myself and my immediate I start looking towards extended and, and my neighbors you know try to be mindful about what exactly. no, that's I can do to support them in, in their needs that's good uh, my parents spend a lot of time thinking about their parents, right? I spend almost no time thinking about my parents, right? So that's a stage of life thing. Um, you know, I do worry about my parents, but the reality is they're both very active. You know, they are both starting to develop some of their own health concerns, but generally speaking, you know, uh, they are somebody I need to plan around, you know, with today, like today, I need to spend a lot more time planning about my four-year-old burning my house down. But like you said, one health event changes everything, whether it's minor or major. You know, whether it's our extended family or our immediate family. One one event can change the whole dynamic. It does. In seconds. Yep. Yeah, even all sorts of things on health events. Um, truthfully, most of us should be spending more time planning about health events than probably earthquakes. Um, but there's other things too. Um, Remember, when we were talking about priorities, we came up with more, like, so, so we talked about um, health events impact a lot of things. Let's, let's go back, remember, with priorities, I brought up family members, right? Whether you have photo books, like I keep mine digitally, it's what my generation does. But um, one of the things that if we had followed that through the conversation up until now, when we talked about how do we accomplish this, you know, that priority of family memories and things like that, I would have said, well, I keep it on a computer, right? Well, now when we're talking about what can disrupt it, lots of things, right? The hard drive could fail, right? The, the data could be corrupted, right? Somebody could delete it accidentally. Um, somebody could, you know, there are all sorts of things that could happen, right? When you start to think about some of those other priorities that you have, disruption suddenly isn't about these kind of big, immediately life-changing things. There are lots of small things that can happen that we don't plan around, that we don't think about, generally, um, that can disrupt our life. Um, I mean, if you've ever met anybody, 
who's lost a hard drive full of baby pictures, they're pretty upset. A lot of those people would have, in many ways, preferred their car died, right? <coughs> or even a portion of their house get burned than to have lost those photos. Um, you ever met somebody who was very proficient at a musical instrument uh, or at singing? You ever met them after that instrument was destroyed or they had uh, health damage to their voice? Right? They would rather, there are all sorts of disasters they would have happily embraced in order to avoid that particular outcome. Um, right? If you enjoy playing the violin, most people are going to accomplish that by owning a violin. Um, and so it's worth thinking about. How do I care for that violin? Where is that violin? Is it flammable? Right? Do I keep it next to the you know, turpentine and acetone? And you know, my little 80-year-old you know, freezer with the motor that isn't brushless that just sparks every few minutes. Right? Like, that's a bad place to keep a violin. Um, so, uh, in part, like I said, so one, one of the things I would encourage you to do is as you start to think through this disruption part. I think we've been kind of through common practice have gotten used to thinking of it in the sense of natural disasters, health events, um, of those ourselves and around us. But the truth is, if you really want to create an emergency preparedness plan that really helps protect your life from emergence, from, from these adverse events, uh, you want to go back to those priorities and really try to trace them out, right? Like, how do we accomplish education? Right? Public schools. Right? But what could disrupt the public school? A strike. Right? Uh, which is happening in many parts of the country right now. Um, I think, fortunately, teachers are wonderful enough people that they don't strike so long term that it really impacts the education of children. Um, but, that, you know, there's no guarantees. Um, Right? What if uh, a school, you know, so, so, so if, if you notice, if you think about what kind of adverse events really impact your priorities. Um, you know, if you are somebody who likes to read, and you've embraced Amazon and their Kindle ecosystem, right? Loss of Wi-Fi could be a big deal to you. Your tablet, your, your Kindle breaking. Could, 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 it's like losing an entire library, right? Most people would think of a room full of books burning to the ground as an epic tragedy. Um, but a Kindle breaking, and then just go buy another one. Which, I agree, that's how I respond. But maybe for you, that's not an option. Maybe that Kindle is, a, is not something that's so easy to replace. Um, so that's why we went through these, this in this, this order. Is when you come up with your family priorities, right? Take the time, if you've decided to list it on a piece of paper, this is a family priority, right? You, need, you should trace it through. How do I accomplish this? Day to day, what is everything I do to accomplish this? Because that's going to help, help you be imaginative enough to really see the types of things that can interrupt it, right? Until I realized how important our family photos was, I didn't realize how much that was on Seagate having made a really good hard drive, right? In fact, if you read the fine print, they will tell you this will not work forever. <clears throat> um, and so, right, they even know it won't work forever. And I want it to last forever, so now I'm already on notice. I need to be planning for the day that drive fails. Lots of ways to do that. I figured out my way of doing it. Um, but if that's why we started where we did. Um, a few more thoughts on when we talk about kind of emergencies. Um, in, when you, if, you, if you go to the oil industry, when they do risk management, which is kind of what we're doing, but we're doing it, you know, kind of more rational way. Um, when they talk about emergencies, they kind of evaluate them on two different scales. One of them is likelihood, and the other one is severity. Okay? Some emergencies are very, very likely, um, but they're not very severe. Um, and, you know, kids breaking arms, right? Kids break arms. Kids, kids get scratches. They get scraped. They fall down. Right? As far as an emergency goes, most in fact, it's happened so commonly, we don't even think it's an emergency, right? That's just life. 
Um, but we think of it that way because it's very likely, it's not very severe. But it's important to think about these events on this way, right? Like hurricane. A hurricane in Utah would be hugely severe, right? We'd have flash floods, we'd have, you know, normal floods, we'd have wind damage, we'd have erosion, we'd have just, it would be a disaster um, in the literal sense of the word. But it's so unlikely, right? So unlikely, probably not worth focusing our, prepare, our preparedness attention on a hurricane. And so as you think through these things, right, especially like health events, when I was 30, it, you know, I was running 30 miles a week, very, very reasonable to say, I'm not having a heart attack soon, I'm not worried about that. It's not likely, it would be severe, but it's not likely. Now, it's like, I should plan on one tomorrow. But, um, but that's, right, right, so it's important, these things change over time, and as you're doing your preparedness, you want to think about, um, you want to think about these things. Something that is very likely, but maybe moderate or low severity, like hard drive failing, like something going wrong on your computer, um, forgetting a password, right? Getting hacked. Um, you know, these are the types of things that it's not going to end your life, um, but it happens. Like I said, it has, it, it, it's something that you can experience that people care about. Um, um, and this is also going to help guide when you when you think of those two those two scales, likelihood and severity. Those two scales are going to help you. Um, this is going to help you rule out zombie apocalypse, right? Not very likely. It would be very severe, but it's not very likely. Um, and so it's going to help focus your family preparedness in places where it's really going to be uh, most beneficial, and you can kind of get the most kind of effort. Um, and you can really protect your life, right? Not just life in general. Well, what, how does my family live? How do I protect that? Um, for you, you may be happy to be homeless as long as you have your violin, right? When you start to think through your priorities and you rank them and you think about how do I accomplish them day to day, and now you start talking about emergencies, house burning down, you might be like, I don't even care. But, your violin getting lost, that may be a big deal. Um, and so, like I said, you start, you, as you flow, and so then you start to think about likelihood and severity, like severity for everybody may not be the same thing, right? Except for me, the only thing in my house I can't replace is those hard drives. Uh, and my family, right? The people that are there. Um, for other people, though, there may be a piece of heirloom furniture. There may be something else that has such deep meaning that it is worth preserving. Um, or maybe the house itself, I don't know. So, like I said, it's important to think about that. Don't feel like severity or, um, has to be um, the same for you that it is for somebody else. Um, those can be different. You, you know, you can each decide that house burning down is a different degree of severity depending on your situation. Um, so that's that. Um, next one is, uh, okay, so now we're actually to kind of the preparedness part. All of this up until now has really, up to the planning part, all of this up until now is really just getting the right context, right? It's getting the right information. If we'd sat you down at the beginning and said, how do you prepare for emergencies? We would have said, food storage. Money, you know, you know, we would have thrown out some general things that we've always attached to the word preparedness, but it wouldn't necessarily be preparing us and our lives to be resilient against emergencies. But now, when we ask the question, now we can think about, okay, how do I prepare for my photos getting lost? Right? It's not the same as a life or death, life or death event, but it's an important thing. How do I prepare for that? Right? One of the things about family emergency preparedness plans is it doesn't have to only be about the earthquake. Um, one of the things that my family did when I was a child and they were doing food storage is my parents, and I forget what it was, there was a particular snack that my family just loved. Oh no, it was, it was baking cocoa. We liked to make chocolate cakes, right? We made, in fact, we had a tradition for a few years that chocolate cake was breakfast on Sunday. Right? We were clear champions. Um, and um, 
So my, my parents kind of had the wisdom to look at that and say, you know what? Baking cocoa is so important to us. It's such, an, it's such a part of our family and how we live. We should have as long a supply of baking cocoa as we have of flour and sugar. Right? We should be planning as much around chocolate cakes as we should be around bread. And so they did, right? It wasn't actually a huge expense. It actually didn't cost that much, right? It's a small thing. But for my family, my parents, you know, when I was a child at the time, that was a big point of preparation was, let's have the baking cocoa we need so that our life can be resilient to adverse effects. Um, one of the interesting things in Alaska is, like 95% of the food, and I made that number up, but it's a big number. All, you know, the food is shipped to Alaska. Right? There's some things are grown there, but most of the food Alaskans eat is shipped from somewhere else. So you know what a natural disaster is to an Alaskan? The longshoremen going on strike. Right? So the food's in the water, right, in, in, in the inlet, but you can't get to it because the people that take it off the boat and put it on the truck aren't doing that. So suddenly there's this thing you didn't realize that most people don't have to plan around. Right? But the Alaskans have to plan around it. So losing baking cocoa is actually something, in addition to, right, like, asteroid hitting the Earth, right, vampires becoming the dominant race, whatever, like, longshoremen going on strike was suddenly an event that you had to think around, and that actually quickly could impact baking cocoa, which is why my parents felt, oh, you know what, it just makes sense. Let's add that to our food storage. So when you do preparedness, don't think only about the zombie apocalypse, right? Lots of events, lots of emergencies can interrupt your family and could make your family unhappy and uncomfortable. So if you're going to go through this effort anyway, if you're going to take the time to do this, find those ways to be comfortable, right? To be happy, right? To, to, to have joy even in an emergency. If that's baking cocoa, it's baking cocoa. If that's saving your family photos, save your family photos. Um, if that's a violin, save the violin. So when we talk about, like, how do you, you know, what is your family's plan, you should have the big things, right? What if dad has a heart attack? What if mom has a heart attack? What if, you know, what if there's an earthquake? Like, it's important to keep, I'm not saying wipe those off the list, but don't stop there. Go to, what if there's a power surge and it fries our electronics? What if, you know, you know, the old 1960-whatever Corvette that we restored gets in an accident, right? Like, think through these things. Think about the things that are important to you and your family. That's what's the difference between a family preparedness plan and just reading stuff off the internet, right? That's where you can make it a difference, and that's where you can tie it to yourself. Um, um, preparedness in general, I guess, I'll go back and ProvidentLiving.org, um, you know, the LDS Church is great about some general preparedness ideas, right? Three months of food, six months of food, right? Some number of days of water, um, having some cash, right? The church acknowledges that most of us live on cash. Um, so have some cash available, have some savings. Um, spend, you know, low, low debt, right? Turns out most of us work and need a monthly paycheck because we have monthly financial obligations, often in the form of debt, mortgage, car payment, credit card payment. Um, the more you can eliminate those monthly financial obligations, the more losing a job becomes less painful. Um, so if you can mitigate your debt, if you can limit your debt, um, you can change how much pain uh, losing a job would be. Um, or, you know, you know, a dramatic economic change, right, a macroeconomic change. Um, you know, at the same time, rampant inflation wipes out debt as well. So, you know, one of the things to keep in mind with preparation, no one thing is a golden solution, right? For as imaginative and as diligent as you are preparing, something may occur that you, your, your set of preparations didn't think of. That's okay. Right? Doesn't mean stop. Doesn't mean don't do it. Do your best. Um, uh, one of the things that often happens in these types of processes when people do it, when businesses do it, 
is, is they start to get, they run away with themselves and they start to think of, you know, I, I can't, in fact, I've even done this to people, like, well, in the case of an earthquake, I've got my 72 hour kit and I've got a gas can with, you know, nine gallons of gas in it. That's exactly how much I need in order to get to place, such and such a place. And it's like, well, what if the earthquake destroyed the road? You're not driving there anyway. Can you carry all that stuff that goes in that car? Like, it's really easy to kind of just get more and more imaginative about disasters to the point where it's impossible to prepare. Don't get tied up in that. Like I said, that's why we went through it this way. That's why you don't start by talking about what disasters can occur. That's why you don't start the conversation there. Start about start priorities, work it through. Um, and then, you know, with this last step, we'll, have, we'll discuss in a minute. How do you plan around it? There's two ways to plan around um, a disaster. The first disaster, the first way to plan around it is trying to limit the likelihood of it occurring, right? You know, you don't think about this, but showing up to work every day is part of your plan for having a job, right? Because if you're showing up every day, you're less likely to get fired. And if you're less likely to get fired, well, then you're mitigating the damage of not having a job. Um, and so it's important, like that's, and then suddenly it starts to click. That's why I go to work every day. I've really been wondering the last few years. But that's why I go every day. It's because it helps me keep the job, which brings in the income, which helps provide for life, health, safety, security, and my family. Um, so one of the things, part of our preparedness is going to be, next up, something we're already going to be doing as part of our normal life, right, um, is going to be, how do we decrease the likelihood of these emergencies occurring, right? When it comes to a heart attack, exercise, right, health, like don't eat only bacon. Um, that's in some ways part of emergency preparedness. Um, you can't entirely control if and when you're going to have a health event, but there are some things that are generally within your control, right? Healthy living has its benefits. Um, and it's maybe if you're not putting time to that, if you can't, that's okay. But maybe it is worth thinking, oh no, I need to take better care of myself, right? Even with all the life insurance I currently paid for for me, it really doesn't raise my children from their ages to adulthood. I need to stay alive. I need to not have a heart attack. Um, um, keeping your medication right, seeing healthcare regularly, right? Like you start to see how there's all these things that suddenly become part of your emergency preparedness plan. Things that loosely maybe have already been doing, but now it kind of fits, right? Now I go to the dentist. Why? This is how to help answer that question. I'm not tired, but just a little bit. Um, so that's one side of it, trying to decrease likelihood. Um, the other side is, let's say my efforts to decrease the likelihood would fail, unless I can't control that at all. How do I decrease the impact? Right? Um, earthquakes, nothing I do is going to change an earthquake happening. Right? No point in preparing on that front. Um, but, having some food storage, right? Having my house be earthquake proof, or at least resistant. Having, you know, knowing, you know, what the natural disasters from my area could be, how do I plan against them? Um, not building a house in the Florida Keys, um, right? Like all of these things could be part of, you know, uh, I guess that would be very likely, but anyway. Um, but, but, right, you can start to think through, like, how do I decrease the, the impact to my life when something does happen? Um, savings, you know, having a savings account with a month, two months, frankly anything. If you can get a savings account with two hundred dollars, you are better off with it than having a savings account with zero dollars. There's no amount of savings that doesn't help, right? It is also true that no matter how much savings you have, more would be better, right? Um, so, you know, I think savings, when it comes to financial savings, we get trapped in these, uh, you know, oh, it's not worth it, I, only, I can only save $10 a week, whatever. Like, like I said, savings, any, when an emergency happens, any savings you have will be amazing. And it doesn't matter how much you have, it won't be enough. But savings is a great way to decrease the impact of any financial result. Um, debt, you know, if your debt burden is low, having an adverse financial event 
would, right, it's really going to be a lot easier to handle and work through if you have less debt obligations otherwise. Um, you know, part of planning might be um, being strategic about debt, right? This vehicle we own outright, this vehicle, if we have financial hardships, it's sold, it's gone, right? Along with the payment that goes with it, right? Like, sometimes, like, it's okay to, you know, be creative about how you plan around uh, your life. That's how you're, you want to, like, prepare. That's a great thing to do. Um, um, so, so there's both sides of preparedness, right? There's how do I lessen the impact and how do I try to prevent it from happening in the first place? Um, sometimes we do a mix of both. Sometimes only one side is available. And, um, but all of it's good, right? All of it is good preparation. Um, some of it, like I said, things you're going to find that you're already building into your life. Most people are pretty rational, right? They've got a healthy dose of anxiety. And so they're always thinking about this stuff. They just didn't think about it in a clear way like this, right? And so now what you're going to do is you're going to be able to start tying in all these things. Um, what other types of preparation? What other types of things can you do? Oh, one last, one last uh, distinction to call up. Oh, well, we're actually out of time. One last thing to actually call up on preparation. Some preparation is very specific, right? Setting up my hard drives in a configuration where they write in a mirrored fashion so that if any one drive fails, I've always got all the data backed up immediately and all the time. That won't help me in the event of a heart attack, right? At all. So, which doesn't mean it's not bad. It's not, that doesn't mean it's bad preparation. It just means that some preparation is very broad spectrum, right? Savings, avoid debt, food storage. Very broad spectrum. You can use those preparations in a lot of different scenarios. Not necessarily all of them, right? Turns out, if I need a hard drive working, doesn't matter how many buckets of wheat I've got. Those buckets of wheat will never become a functioning hard drive. And so, it's important to think about when you're, when you're going through this, some preparation is going to be very specific. It may not cost any money, it may not or cost very little, but it'll be very specific. Some of it will be very broad. That's okay. Both solutions are good. You don't need to feel like everything you do for preparation um, is, you know, we talk about, you know, health, happiness, security, right? I take my wife on dates. doesn't sound like that's emergency preparedness, but it prevents her from killing me, which is a big part of my health, um, right? So, you know, it's, it's like, think about, again, this is about your life, your family, your priorities. Um, and like I said, when you get to the preparation phase, do kind of what's commonly available, like follow some of the common wisdom, but, you know, be free and, and be willing to adopt those things that, um, that are unique to your circumstances so you can be happy. And with that, are there any questions? Last couple of minutes. So that's part of, I think, the other advantage here is it helps you focus your life on what's, you know, what you're actually doing.